last time out for the RNG British Talent Cup was at Thruxton. It was Sullivan Mounsey that took the whole shot down into turn one as he got a tremendous start on that number four machine. And then these three at the front were locked in a battle as they were in race one. It was the 52 of Evan Belford, the 43 of Emmanuel Brinton, and the number four of Sullivan Mounsey who were swapping and changing positions as the laps ticked away. The number 48 of Ollie Walker was in a distant fourth at this point in the race. And as these riders were battling it out for the victory contention at the front, Ollie Walker latched himself right onto the back of that group and put himself right in contention for the victory. He was making some big moves on the Vision Track machine, some scary ones down at the fast section of the circuit. But as they came down into the final chicane for the final time, it was Emmanuel Brinton that kept himself pretty much in the top two spots all race long. It was too strong on the brakes at the final chicane, got the perfect run through there and then managed to take home the win and bring it to the line. Sullivan Mounsey tried to drag the number 48 of Ollie Walker to the line, but it was Brinton that took victory ahead of Walker and Sullivan Mounsey. It's crunch time in the RNG British Talent Cup and there is a championship to be decided. Emmanuel Brinton sits in third place on the grid. His first time here at Alton Park. The first time we saw the circuit was yesterday in FP1. In second position is Evan Belford, your championship leader under the previous lap record by quite some margin, but it was Sullivan Mounsey that took pole position and will be starting from the perfect place on the grid ahead of this race one. Both underneath the previous lap record, a 47.2 from Mounsey. The previous lap record set by Johnny Garness was a 47.9. Myself, Tristan Finocchiaro, will, bring, will be bringing you all of the action for today's Saturday race. And alongside me will be Neil McKenzie. Tomorrow it will be Tom Brooks and Neil as well, unless Mad Mark is going to be making a debut in the commentary box, Neil. Definitely want to keep Mad Mark out of the commentary box. Uh, not a not a nice chap at all, uh, I've, I've heard apparently, so uh, he will be barred. So it's uh, myself and Neil McKenzie for this one then. This pace at the front, really hot. Like I said, both of them under the lap record. Yeah, I, I'm very surprised and shocked because generally over all the classes here at Old Park, although the weather has been good, the lap times haven't been particularly fast, but pace is certainly picking up today. I know in Superbike qualifying, the guys did get going a bit, but these guys are very impressive this morning. Two of them under the lap record. Manuel Brinton, first time here, almost on the lap record. So uh, conditions almost perfect. The temperature's nice, the track is dry. Everything's just set for some amazing racing. Thruxton, we did see that great four-way battle in the final race there. All the championship contenders are pretty much in the top seven today. There's a lot of sorting out to be done. The championship uh, is unlikely to be won here, but uh, yeah, Evan Belford looking good. Yeah, there is a championship to be decided. Can't be won in this race, but could very well be tomorrow. Just 50 points he needs going into Donington. 45 currently is the lead from Evan Belford to Emmanuel Brinton. Sullivan Mounsey is still very much in the championship picture as well. 49 points adrift. It looks as if Harley McCabe is pretty much out of the championship picture as well now, down in fourth. So it looks as if Belford could very well be taking the title tomorrow if all goes his way in this race and all goes his well to, all goes his way tomorrow. We know he's very strong around this Alton Park circuit. Sullivan Mounsey is though who's on that pole position ahead of Belford and Emmanuel Brinton, who, like you say, has only seen this circuit for the first time this weekend. Lucas Brown is looking pretty strong ahead of the Floridian. Julian Correa, Ronnie Harris up there in P6. It's his rookie season this year, and he's looking pretty strong here at Alton Park. Ollie Walker was very strong back at Thruxton, challenging for the victory, and he'll be starting from seventh place. Alexander Rowan will be starting from 10th as he read heads row four ahead of Stevenson and Desoy. Desoy, who won here last year. Eli Banish heads row five ahead of Philip Soroviak with Charlie Huntingford down on row six ahead of Clayton Edmonds and Alfie Davidson. Alfie Davidson back with the Peak Banks Racing Honda this weekend. George Bowes down on row eight ahead of Pilpenko and Jolliffe. Jones, Barnes and Bannister make row nine with Luke Schofield, Hopkins and King on row 10. Greg Marshall rounds out the grid. This is his first weekend in the British Talent Cup and running a really nice livery, Dynaco Blue, cars inspired livery on that machine as they come up then to form on the grid we will have action for british talent cup race one coming your way it is crunch time then in the rng british talent cup there's a championship on the line 
Sullivan Moundsy is set on pole position ahead of your championship leader, Evan Belford. It's the top three in the championship who are the top three on the grid. Sullivan Moundsy takes off a tear off ahead of this race one. Which way is it going to go? Attention goes to the lights for race one. And they're away pretty cleanly so far. It's a decent start from Mounty, but it's a very good start from the number 52 of Brinton. It looks from the nifty 52 of Belford, sorry. It looks as if Brinton has dropped through the pack. He has, and he's got Lucas Brown all over the rear wheel of him as well. Lucas Brown heading off onto the green. A steady start so far for Brinton, but a good start for Belford. Yeah, excellent hold shot there. Evan Belford got a nice cushion in the championship. As we know in previous races, we've seen Evan Belford upside down for no apparent reason, just when we least expect it. So then Mouncey, the number four, having a look down into Ireland there. Lovely pass, got a nice drive out of Cascades, into Ireland, that fast left-hander, and then into the tight shell hairpin. Brinton makes a move on Correa then as well, making up for that struggle off the line. Manuel Brinton, done a lot of racing over in Spain and struggling at the Alton Park circuit in, in practice, but seems to have found his form in qualifying. That's Charlie Huntington, unfortunately that's gone down the number 76 on the Optiven Moto Technics Honda. Really unfortunate start to his race. 2020 LC40 Elite Champion in the Mini Bike Championships over at Fab Racing. Sullivan Mounsey it is then that leads the way on the number four. We saw it back at Thruxton. He liked, he liked to lead our oh, 23. Luke Stevenson has gone out of the race. Really unfortunate for Reese. He's had a really unlucky season this uh, year. Reese Stevenson, the number 23. He pushed Johnny Garness in some of the closing races last year, and I really thought he was in for a cracking season on the Lexel machine there. And he's just gone from one disaster to another. A few injuries, a few niggles, changed teams early in the season. And, uh, yeah, just a few crashes. And, yeah, that just says all about his season there. And obviously got a technical at the side of the track. Here comes Brinton then. He means business in the championship. It's between these three that are leading it. The number four, Mounty, 43, Brinton, 52 is Evan Belford. Those are your top three in the championship. And they're locked together on circuit at the moment. Have a look at the number seven as well. Harley McKay looks as if he's making moves as well. He's just dropped off that championship battle of recent, but Harley McKay on the number seven was very much in it not so long ago. Looks as if these top three are just starting to break away ever so slightly, though. Lucas Brown on the number 29, we've seen time and time again, he can go with these guys. He certainly can. Just the notice there from race control, the number 28, Charlie Barnes, he will have a, a time penalty for a jump start. Mounsey, it is that leads then. Lovely character around the paddock. Lots of parents from the Fab Racing Minibike British Championships have messaged me to say what a lovely lad that he is. He helps out a lot of the young talent over in the Mini Bike Championships. He runs morning stretch sessions for a lot of the riders and helps them one-to-one -one and really is a lovely character around the paradigm. There's one rider in particular that he's been helping out, Max Johnson, just 10 years old, racing in the mini bikes. He's been diagnosed with autism and struggles with certain motor skills. And Sullivan Mounsey actually takes time out of his day to help him and help him with certain stretches that helps him and makes, makes riding a little bit easier for him. So uh, really a true inspiration is Sullivan Mounsey. Max Johnson, who will be watching this one, has actually recently won a signed set of uh, Neil McKenzie boots as well. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I hope he's got big enough feet to fit in these. But yeah, I remember handing these boots over. They are all in one piece. So yeah, nice one. Uh, and I hope you get lots of pleasure out of there. Um, but Sullivan Mounsey, that's a sign of a confident, a, a rider that will help other riders and help others in the paddock. He's not selfish. He wants to go out there and, and inspire others. And, and yeah, I can't, I can't thank him enough for that. And it, it, he's really good. What I love about this bunch at the front, they've really become confident. You speak to Mounsey, Brinton, Belford, Brown, Career, McCabe, all of these guys, um, Ollie Walker, they've really sort of risen to the fore this year. Gain confidence, you can tell they're riding well. They're all pretty much in the hunt most weekends now. So yeah, it, it's just really good to see them mature. And I'm just wondering, Evan Belford there, he has got that nice cushion in the championship. Ryan Saxable, Saxaby and, and Short Ride, they're the guys that look after him. I just wonder if there's been any advice like, just bring this home, keep scoring points, keep that cushion, don't let him silly, you don't need to win. Podium, I guess, if possible. And, and maybe he's uh, just decided to ride a safe race. It certainly looks that way at the moment. Yeah, there's been so many instances this year that we've seen the maturity of these guys and, and, and how, especially with, with Belford in a lot of instances, especially I was thinking back to Brands Hatch, yeah. you can really see a wise head. Oh, and that's number 65 of Alexander Rowan that's gone down and out of the race. Really unfortunate for the 16-year-old from Northern Ireland. Ella was 11th in the championship, but that's not going to do him any favours. It was his 55th start, but it's ended with a DNF, unfortunately.
back to the front then. Sullivan Mounsey is the lead still. But Emmanuel Brinton is all over his rear wheel now. And we saw back at Thruxton, Neil, always kept himself in the top two. Yeah, certainly played played a clever game at Thruxton, really sussed out the opposition. Sullivan Mounsey always oh. had to lead, um, which is great. And I like to see that because, again, it shows a confident rider. And uh, to win a race, you've got to lead, and you've got to lead on that last lap. But the other thing that does is maybe give away little things that the other riders haven't picked on, especially for the likes of Emmanuel Brinton, who's basically just learning the track as he goes. He's, he's a limited time here. Again, sign of a, a special rider is one that can get up to speed really quickly on, on a new track. And, and really, sometimes that's just a state of mind, just deciding you're going to... I'm sure he's, he's done his homework with videos and uh, on, on bike cameras and on board laps. So, uh, but yeah, uh, the thing is, if you're leading, the others, if they're close enough, can get a look at maybe where you do have a little advantage. So they nice having a, a confident look around there, but Look at the number 29. Just thought Brinton was going to have a little look at the inside there at Cascade. It's a brave move, but it has been done in the past. He's got into Bouncy's slipstream now. Is he going to have a look at Island Bend? I think he's going to think better of it this time around. Meanwhile, Lucas Brown passing up the race. And yeah, as I was saying, closing in, getting a four way slip, three way slipstream there. Keep an eye out then for the number 29 of Lucas Brown. He's latched himself onto the back of this group, the 15 year old very tall rider on that machine so it's impressive that he's able to do what he is Brinton's not small himself though either no 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 he's certainly uh totally mousy maybe just kind of the perfect size fits in very very aerodynamic but uh, yeah look at Manuel Brinton is taller but he's got his, his riding position just perfect so he can get his arms tucked in he pushes his his bum back in the seat and uh, certainly looks looks fine on the straights Julian Correa not completely out of this one either, no. down in fifth, the Floridians, just keeping himself in touch here and just takes one mistake from one of these guys and he's fully in the group. Founds he's still that leads them. Yeah, he's, he's happy leading and uh, yeah, and not setting a, a slow pace at all. Uh, best lap 48-4, which is a little bit outside uh, Garnessi's lap record, but uh, certainly uh, maybe he's controlling, he's happy to, happy to run at the front and we've got a four-way battle now for the win. Poundsy it leads then from Brinton, Belford and Lucas Brown. Julian Correa just hanging on to the coattails of these guys. Will we see a move soon? It looks as if Evan Belford's going to be making a move at turn one. He doesn't this time around. All these guys as you were so far. A little bit of a moment there for Brinton on the number 43. But these guys locked in battle on lap five of 12 in the British Talent Cup. Poundsy then just edging out an ever so slight little bit of breathing space as, as Irvin Belford moves himself up into P2 ahead of the number 43, Emmanuel Brinton. Evan Belford, of course, your championship leader, just 16 years old, came so close to the title in 2021 when it was the last round showdown at Donington Park between Belford, Casey, O'Gorman and Carter Brown. Any three of them could have won the title. Belford finished third then in the end as Casey O'Gorman took the title. What a finale that was. I clearly remember commentating that one when Casey O'Gorman took it. Came back again to fight in 2022, but it wasn't a complete write-off for Belford, but a complicated broken tibia injury at round one ruled him out of that championship chances. But this year, he's just looked so, so strong on the number 52 machine. And now he looks as if he's going to be trying to challenge Mounsey for that victory here at Alton Park. He could very well be taking the championship tomorrow if he plays his cards right here. Lap five of 12 then in the RNG British Talent Cup and they're almost done with this lap. It's Mounsey that leads the way ahead of the number 52, Evan Belford. Emmanuel Brinton's just lost a little bit of ground on this lap and he's falling into the clutches of the number 29, Lucas Brown. Lucas Brown makes a move up the inside then. That's Lucas into a championship, sorry, into a podium position here. But Brinton's going to snap straight back at him at turn one and he does it nicely, gets the drive out of Lodge Corner. And he's, a, and he's up the inside of him before they even get onto the brakes at turn one. But Lucas Brown pounces back straight away. Good little tussle between these two. Great little tussle. And uh, number 40, Julian Correa there, is playing right into his hands. He is a man on the move. He's been setting personal best lap times. Uh, and while these two in front. Oh, and he's down. Oh, we're really unfortunate there for the number 43 of Emmanuel Brinton. And that's going to mean... Big, big consequences for the title, and yes. that's Ryan Frost's bike without a rider going down the, going down the straight down into Island Bend. So I wonder what's happened there. 
Really unfortunate for the number 24 of Ryan Frost. So that's two of the riders out of this race, perhaps just caught. I think he was caught yeah. in Brinton's crash, unfortunately, there. We'll have to see what happened. It's a weird this crash from Manuel Brinton. Can out of cascades here. He is the rider in front. And he just a bit of a bottle with the rear suspension there. You see, uh, it just seemed to lose contact. I don't know if it's a suspension problem or uh, something on the track, but just a bit of a bobble. He had no warning at all. And yeah, a separate incident there yeah, for Frost. Yeah. So unusual when, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is a zombie bike. They uh, decided not to lay down. Fortunately, did the right thing, headed off the track. Stayed almost off the track. No danger to other riders, but yeah, frightening. And Frost went down, but the, the bike wanted to carry on. Safety car coming out and that's not a good sight to see unfortunately for Brinton that's gonna really hinder his championship chances now well yeah I mean for uh, Evan Belford to take 25 points out of him or even 20 points out of him uh, yeah makes it very difficult and hopefully we haven't got any riders injured there was that Emmanuel Brinton was it Ryan yeah, Frost that was that's Ryan Frost's bike there that's being taken off the side of the circuit both have very similar levers though yeah so real unfortunate end to the race for both of them. I wonder if Frost just was a little bit distracted with Brinton at the side of the circuit and then just a little bit too greedy on the power and went over the top of that number 24 machine. Safety car is out then. So these guys will have to reset. The likes of Brown will have seen that crash happen in front of him. He'll just have to clear that out of his mind and get ready to go again once, once the safety car comes in. A really difficult scenario for these guys. Really weird crash for Brinton there. I mean, he wasn't offline. He's perfectly on right line. He was almost off the corner, picking the bike up. And you just see the suspension of a bit of a, a bobble. The, the rear tire just a bit of movement, which uh, there's no real ripples in the track there. But uh, in some of the bigger classes, it really is a part of the corner where you're really getting hard on the power. I mean, you've got a bit of new angle to catch it out. But these bikes, it's more of a corner speed. It's not a lot of power going through the, the rear tyre at that point, so I'm sure that uh, he has had the odd off this year, but uh, generally a very safe rider and not one you'd expect to, to go down at that point. Not an easy circuit to have to learn in one well, weekend, the first time well, we saw the circuit, like we said, was FP1. That is one thing, the, the circuit, pretty. It's, it's difficult, it's tricky, but it's pretty straightforward to learn. But the thing about the other riders, they spent a lot of time here. There's always little quirks, little niggly bits that you can find out through lots and lots of laps and lots and lots of races here that might just catch you out. And uh, for a new rider, uh, it's pretty much, as I said, he was learning the track. He's learning all of that as he goes at race pace and at a fast race pace. So um, maybe just, uh, just, just, just caught him out and just lack of uh, track time. Just going to take this opportunity, you can see at the back of this group, the number eight, Alfie Davidson, just 15 years old on the number eight Pete Banks racing machine. He's had a real tough time in the Honda British Talent Cup, started back in BTC in 2021, but had a massive crash before his first race and broke pretty much every bone in his leg and missed the whole season with injury. Came back last year, but was racing with a lot of plates in his leg and really struggled last year, was just using the time to learn the tracks. And then at the beginning of this year was set to, to race with Pete Banks racing, and then with a week to the with a week to the first race, Pete fell over, broke his hip, his hip, and so he's been riding a spare bike all season. Now Pete is back and the team are back and he's back on the Pete Banks racing bike. So I was having to learn that bike. A real tough time he's had in the British Talent Cup, but hopefully we'll be looking to turn a new page here starting this weekend and we'll be looking to try and turn that luck around for the rest of the season. Only 15 years old, Alfie Davidson with all these guys here now, getting a chance to reset and go again when the safety car comes in, Neil. Yes, uh, if uh, yeah, the lights on the safety car are out, what it does give us is an amazing, an amazing four laps of racing because they are all bunched up together then. Um, tires have cooled down a little bit, so they have to be careful at least for the first half, half of the lap after the safety car goes in. And the rider here, the number one for Silver Mounts, he is the man that is in control. So he can pretty much dictate the pace. He can back these guys up within reason. And uh, there'll be no passing for anyone until they get over the, the start finish line. So he really has to, he can't control things at the front. He might choose just to go when the safety car goes in or he might well back them up and then go uh, at, at any point after that. So uh, yeah, there's some tactics to be played here. So it's going to be interesting to see how he deals with it. Now, is he just 16 years old? 
Moundsy's mum watching from the side of the circuit, originally from London. Moundsy, as you can tell by his accent in his interviews, currently living in Maids Morton, Buckinghamshire, which is seven miles from Silverstone Circuit, so very local to racing, and it looks as if safety car will be coming in now and we'll be back underway here at Alton. We're back underway here then at Alton Park for the RNG British Talent Cup. And Sullivan Moundsy it is that leads the way. We've lost Emmanuel Brinton who went down and that brought out the safety car. But now we are back underway and Moundsy there timed it to perfection when the safety car came in. He's already got a bit of breathing space over, over Belford. Yeah, there was no suspect tactics going on there. He, he just, uh, he gentle, just backed things off and then away he went. And if oh, we've got another rider grass tracking on a bit of an excursion. You can see it's a bit damp out there. I'm not sure who that is. Is that, but number, is that Ollie Walker, the number 48 of Ollie Walker? Looks like a vision track machine. It is, that is oh. Ollie Walker. So really unfortunate. He was so strong back at Thruxton race yeah. two. And he was actually in sixth position there. So I'm not sure what happened there where it was a cool, cool tyre that, that caught him out of lack of grip. Uh, Evan Belford, he was probably the biggest loser here because uh, sometimes if you second, if you can time it properly, then you can get a nice, nice run on to the, the guy in front. Um, but yeah. Sullivan Mounts have just got that perfect time perfectly. Belford struggling on this restart. Here's a little look at what happened to Walker. Uh, I'm maybe, I'm not sure, unless he maybe didn't get back enough gears and the bike wasn't pulling him in, it just looked like he ran off the track. But yeah, maybe just in the wrong gear or missed the gear or no gears, not sure. But yeah, strange one there. Easy yeah. to do at Cascades. You're going down the box quite quickly. There's a lot of but, undulations. You're quite yeah. hard on the brakes. Very difficult corner. But now it looks as if Belf is struggling ever so slightly since this restart. Moundsy's come out of the blocks, all guns blazing, and he's brought out a significant lead here. We'll have to see what it is as he comes across the line, but looks as if Belford now is recovering ever so slightly. Brown now up into P3. Harrison de Soy's made his way up to fourth place. He started from 12th on the grid. Winner last, he, last year here at Alton Park, so we know he's good at this Alton Park circuit. Just ahead of his teammate, Julian Correa, Ronnie Harris, and the number 66 is in there as well, just behind Harley McCabe. Ronnie Harris, rookie in the season this year, just 15 years old, 16 next Tuesday from Middle Barton in West Oxfordshire, putting himself in contention here. I will have to see what Evan Belford can do about Sullivan Moundsy, who's running away with it out the front. It was 0.9 of a second as he came across the line. Well, at this point, my dodgy maths calculations if uh, they finished as they, are, as they are at the moment you would then have 50, uh, 65 points points of advantage on uh, uh, Emmanuel Brinton um, so uh, well, only 44 in Sullivan Mounts he hadn't taken them into account so uh, yeah so yeah again another safe ride tomorrow and it could be close to punching that championship Belford needs to walk away from race two tomorrow with a 50-point advantage yeah. to seal the title with two races at the final round at Donington Park. It could very well be done. He just needs to keep it on two wheels in this race and make sure he brings home some points. Just having a look through all the runners and riders through this field. The number two there, that's Josh Bannister, who's learning his craft in the British Talent Cup. The 14, just 14 years old from the Neaton. These riders starting at such a young age, Neil, and it's incredible to see. Yeah. But it's the perfect class, these bikes, limited horsepower, just over 40 brake horsepower, 250 single cylinder machines. Uh, the small and the light and the ideal machines just to, to learn your trade, learn your craft, uh, teach you all about momentum, being the right gears, getting gear in, learning tracks. It just They are just the perfect machines. And we, we have these, we have various talent cups all over the world now using the same machines, the Northern Talent Cup in Europe, European Talent Cup. Asia Talent Cup, and, uh, and then that will culminate for the, the guys to move the career forward. Some of these guys I know will go to selection event for the Red Bull Rookies MotoGP Cup later this month, So, and it is the road to MotoGP. It really is looked upon by Donna for uh, the emerging British talent, and uh, yeah, and they will look after them if they're showing promise. Here we go then, a lap and a half remaining of this Alton Park circuit and we've got a race on our hands we for have. the lead as Evan Belford has caught the number four of Sullivan Moundsy. Moundsy a little bit wide through there and DeSoy is all over the rear wheel of Lucas Brown here as well. So we've got the race victory to be decided as well as this battle for third place. Although it looks as if now Brown is just reeling in the leaders as well. He's really putting the hammer down, put in a really good first sector there. Although Belford was really strong through the first sector as well. 
And here comes Desoy. He is having a little look at the inside. Not quite there this time around. Like we say, lap 11 of 12. So it's coming towards crunch time in this race now. Which way is it going to go? Lap record has gone the way of Evan Belford of 47.2. Was previously a 47.9 set by Johnny Garness last year. Yeah, very impressive lap time. And yeah, and always any potential champion or champion, they like to win as many races as possible. And uh, yeah, there's no way. Evan Belford already set and pers setting personal best sector times on this lap. Very much uh, got Sullivan Mounts in his sight. Oh, Lucas Brown and Harrison Desoy. Desoy got the better of Brown, but Brown isn't going to let it have, isn't going to let Desoy have it have all his own way. As I remember my words. Yeah, equally important is the battle for the podium. Fourth is not an option for these two. And here comes Ronnie Harris as well on the number 66. Is he going to have a say in this podium battle then? It's too much of a tall order for these, these guys to join the front two. But which way is it going to go in this podium fight? Is Ronnie Harris going to have a say on it? It's last lap time here in the RNG British Talent Cup. Who's your money on, Neil? My money's on Evan Belford because he has been a bit special on occasions Here this year. Yeah, Sullivan Mouncey is happy to lead, but that might have been to his disadvantage. Evan Belford just been sussing him out. It's not over yet. There's plenty of passing places, uh, including the uh, down into the, not into the British chicane, but into the Hislop chicane down in there. And then, of course, that old part, that last corner at Lodge, there's so many overtakes there on laps, last, last, last laps in so many classes. So it's not over yet, but certainly looking like it might just go Evan Belford's way. So like you say, Neil, it's not over yet. Mounsey pulls alongside the number 52 of Brinton. He's getting very leery on the brakes there. You could see the front end chattering away on that number four machine. It looks as if Desoy's gotten the better of Lucas Brown. Now I will have to see if he's going to have a response for the number 55, and it doesn't look like it's going to be as Brown goes off onto the grass. He's going to lose two positions there, one to Ronnie Harris and one to Julian Correa. So Harrison Desoy looks set for third place, but who's it going to be that's going to take this victory? Just one corner remaining. Sullivan Mounds, he's got the drive. He's in Belford's he stream. Belford's going very defensive down into the final corner. Mounds, he's on the grass, but he's up the inside of Lodge. Is he going to hold it to the line? Sullivan Mounds, he up the inside of 52 Belford. Is Belford going to get the drag on into the line? He's not going to make it work, or is he? Mounsey takes victory ahead of Evan Belford. Brilliant victory for the number four. He loves his race one victories. Harrison Desoy snatched third place from Lucas Brown on that final lap. Brown dropped through the order. Correa took fourth with Ronnie Harris taking a brilliant P5 on his championship campaign. Brilliant from the number 66. Equals his best result from Brown's hatch. Let's have a look what happened at this final corner. Talk us through it. Well, yeah, typically Evan Belford tried to be a little bit defensive. Nothing wrong there, but Sullivan Mouncey had a plan. He got the perfect drive out of Druids. Nice little strip stream there. <laughs> Used the white line and a little bit of grass as they headed down there. But he had something left on the brakes for Evan Belford and uh, had something left just at the right time. So, uh, yeah, what a fantastic last lap for us. And I cannot wait to hear his interview. Mouncey got the job done. He risked what he needed to at that final corner. And you were just thinking, Neil, that perhaps Belford didn't need to take that extra risk that, that Sullivan that Sullivan could have. Yeah, he, he didn't, but it's still a solid 20 points for him. It's done his championship, no harm at all, but these kids want to win as many races as possible. And he'd be a little bit disappointed, but um, you see riders doing wheelies like that, then it, it means they're pretty happy with their, their day's work. So great day, uh, first race here at Alton Park for Evan Belford. What a race we had on our hands then for the first race of the weekend for the RNG British Talent Cup. It was a brilliant victory from Sullivan Mounsey, who snatched it in the closing stages from the number 52 of Evan Belford on that RS Racing City lifting machine. And you're going to have to think Neil is in a very comfortable position ahead of tomorrow and could walk away with the championship. Yes, it's never over till it's over, but he's looking like it's uh, pretty much he's got one hand on that championship trophy. Never seen so many riders on the grass. I don't know what the magnetism is today. Just riders off on the grass everywhere, and the track conditions are perfect, as we said. The grass is a little bit damp, so they have to be careful. But uh, everyone, hopefully, in one piece, and will be on the grid tomorrow. Unfortunate end for the race. We have to mention for the number 43, Emmanuel Brinton was looking very strong, was challenging Mounsey and Brinton for that victory. One of the first ever racer with Ethiopian heritage to compete at this right at this level. His dad from the UK, his mother from Ethiopia, but went down and out of this race. But this man, the number four, 
Sullivan Mounsey, another brilliant victory. He always seems to take his victories in these race ones. Yeah, he's a great character. He's brought a lot to this championship. Uh, all the kids do. It's just great to see them maturing, get to see the, the riding improving and developing into to race winners and championship contenders. Mounds, it is them that took victory in Alton Park. Mounds, then looks delighted with that one. Has a little laugh and a joke with the marshals. Absolutely lovely character around the around the paddock. We were talking earlier about how he's in, inspiring a lot of the younger generation. A very young rider himself, but still takes the time to go and help out the even younger riders and the mini bike championships that he's come up through. And so many parents have said he's an absolute testament to the sport and honestly inspiring to see for at such a young age for the number four. And he's doing the business. It's another victory for Sullivan Mounsey. He comes in to celebrate it. Excellent stuff from the number four. Here it is, confirmed then. Sullivan Mounsey with another victory, just beating Evan Belford here at race one at Alton Park. Harrison Desoy snatched the podium spot from 12th place on the grid on that final lap ahead of Julian Correa and Ronnie Harris, who equaled his best result down in P5. Really unfortunate for Lucas Brown there running on the grass on that final lap. Harrison McKay took seventh ahead of McCabe, Saraviak and Alfie Davidson, who picked up a top 10. Brilliant result there for the number eight, returning to the Pete the Banks Honda team. Ewan Jones took 13th spot. Good result for the number 11 ahead of Daniel Goodman and George Bowes, who had a massive crash last time out at Thruxton. Let's see what the damage was to the championship standings then. Evan Belford now 44 points ahead of Sullivan Mounsey, who took the victory. Manuel Brinton now 65 points adrift after that crash. McCabe is out of championship contention now, down in fourth. And Lucas Brown it is that rounds out the top five in the championship with Philip Saraviak, the number 60 to 75, rounding out the top 10. Harrison McKay, 13th in the championship. Ronnie Harris has jumped up a few positions to 14th with Alfie Davidson down in 15th. Harrison DeSoy back on the podium. Happy? Yeah, it was, it's been, oh, I couldn't tell you how tough the middle of the season's been, you know. It's been really, really challenging, but yet yeah, eye-opening for how important your mental side is to racing bikes. And um, no, we just, I continue to work as hard as I can. And yeah, today it's um, the race, it's paid off. Fantastic. All good for tomorrow? Yeah, was, um, yeah. hopefully just keep the same sort of pace. Um, I felt I could have gone with Evan and, and Sully after the safety car, but, um, you know, it is what it is. We'll just have to see for tomorrow. Best of luck, man. Thank you. Right, second place somewhere is young Evan Belford. Here he comes. Evan Belford, championship leader. Um, had to give best to, to Sullivan Mounty there in the last corner, but um, I'm sure you'll be happy with uh, a load of points anyway. Yeah, I'm still happy with second. Um, I think I got the fastest lap in the race as well, so I'm possibly on pole tomorrow. Um, I'm excited for the for the next race, and I just think uh, this race today, it was a bit complicated um, with the safety car and all that. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate I didn't end up on the top spot, but it's still valuable championship points, and um, hopefully we can do the job tomorrow. Fantastic. Good job. Well done today. Thank you. And your race one winner then, here he comes. Smooth Sullivan Mounsey. Rolling. Sullivan, <laughs> rolling in. That was a great race. What a fantastic overtake. Oh, yeah, well, we led the whole race, base, uh, I'm pretty sure. Didn't get overtook once still on that last lap, but officially we led every single lap, and that's all we need to do for this championship challenge. And we just got to keep chipping away. I hope Emmanuel Brinton's OK, but I must say this one was for Paul Bird, um, who sadly left us a couple of weeks ago. So. I'm glad that I've been able to bring it to him and he's a lovely character, a lovely person to this paddock, so I'm glad to do that. And just an awesome thank you to the team and everyone that's been supporting me. Well, lovely words and a fantastic job on your win and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Lovely words from a lovely character. Inspirational himself is Sullivan Mounsey and really nice of him there to dedicate that victory to Paul Bird. Like we've said through the broadcast, a really lovely character. Currently a full-time student at the Silverstone Tech College studying engineering and also does work, work experience at the Mercedes F1 team headquarters in Brackley. So Sullivan Mounsey's got a hell of a lot going for him. He's pretty quick, quick on a motorbike as well, Neil.
Yeah, he certainly is. And yeah, just a great character, speaks well, a bit different. And uh, yeah, his race strategy is really, really impressive, really coming together. And he's certainly getting the hang of how to win races now. So yeah, very, very impressive. But, yeah, I'm sure, as you said, going to go on to great things. And I'd love, I think we will see him in Europe next year, maybe in the European Talent Cup. That would be fantastic. A lot of these riders heading over to the British, to the European Talent Cup from the British Talent Cup. Harrison Desoy then, a brilliant third place from him. Took victory here last year in 2022. Looks delighted with that one, Sullivan Moundy, and so he should be. An incredible victory from Smooth Sully as he likes to call himself and as many of the young riders in the mini bike championships like to quote him on as well. Absolute inspiration to the sport and he's keeping his championship chances alive, but it looks as if Belford, like we say, does have one hand on that title going into race two tomorrow. Just one more race here from Alton Park tomorrow and then two more at Donington Park to decide the title. Which way will it go? Stay tuned in to find out. Here's how it went down then for the RNG British Talent Cup. Race one here at Alton Park. It was a disaster at start to the race for the number 76 of Charlie Huntingford, who went down and out of the race. Alexander Rowan also crashed out on the number 65 machine. Emmanuel Brinton was in the top three and then crashed out on the number 43. That brought out the safety car. The safety car came in and then it was a brilliant recovery there from the number four of Sullivan Mounty who put in a gap between him and Evan Belford. Belford came back though with this brilliant move down at Island Bend, the number 52, really strong on the RS Racing Machine, led into the final corner, but Sullivan Mounty wasn't gonna let it go any way other than the way for the number four, as he made an incredible move at the final corner and took it to the line as he took victory in race one yet again here at Alton Park. Belford took 20 points towards his championship charge in second, and Desoy a brilliant third place on the number 55. Richard, I was told by a good friend of mine, Ian Simpson, you were going to have a good season. That's proved to be the case, but Cadwell didn't do your championship hopes any good, did it? No, it definitely didn't. Um, qualifying second on the grid and having good pace all weekend, we thought, right, this is a weekend to claw back some points in Dan Linford, but nah, it ended very quick. Almost uh, turn one, Roller Ryder fell up the inside of me in the first lap and uh, sent me over the grass, put me in last position, but... Uh, had a decent enough race, made my way up, pack half up the ground, maybe to finish 10th then, so it's the best points we could have got, unfortunately. You've got six races left, three rounds, two races each round. Uh, is there enough time to...
Welcome back to Alton Park. Action on the way from the Pirelli National Superstock Championship, a series that saw Dan Limfoot open up a 27-point lead last time out after a disastrous weekend for his closest rival, Richard Kerr at Cadwell Park. Richard, I was told by a good friend of mine, Ian Simpson, you were going to have a good season. That's proved to be the case, but Cadwell didn't do your championship hopes any good, did it? No, it definitely didn't. Um, qualifying second on the grid and having good pace all weekend, we thought, right, this is a weekend to claw back some points in Dan Linford, but nah, it ended very quick. Almost uh, turn one, a rider fell up the inside of me in the first lap and uh, sent me over the grass, put me in last position, but... Uh, had a decent enough race, made my way up, pack half up the ground, maybe it's finished tenth then, so it's the best points we could have got, unfortunately. You've got six races left, three rounds, two races each round. Uh, is it enough time to claw back the 27 points on Dan? Definitely enough time. Uh, six races, a lot can happen in Super Stock 1000, so I'm good at these tracks, you know. The, I've had some good results earlier in the season, and I'm confident I can you know, repeat that and maybe do one better at most of them. So, uh, Dan's going to be quick as usual, and you know there's going to be a few other guys in the mix as well. But I'm looking forward to it. You've been quick at every track. Why? What? What's? What, I mean, why suddenly have you become the man to be, or one of the men to be in this class? I don't know. It's just uh, you know a bit more experience, you know, because I've never been quick in any class. You know, I've never won anything until last year, and now all of a sudden we're pushing podiums every round. So it's just uh, you know. That's just you know more time. A lot of riders I'm up against were quick on one two fives and quick you know winning everything. But it's took me this time to try and win some races. So I think you know I'm just slowly progressing, and I still believe there's a lot more to learn yet, and I still have a long way to go. But it's just you know enjoying it a lot more this year, different attitude, and you know more time with the team, and bikes working better. So it's just all the small pieces coming together. A quiet man, but a fast man. We're liking it. Good luck. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's uh, a long way to go yet in this championship as well, chaps. Three rounds left, 27 points in it. It's been a breakthrough season, really, for Richard Kerr. Yeah, as for us, as far as we're concerned, but actually a couple of people I really respect in the sport who watch the sport have said, watch out for him, he's really, really good. What a nice kid as well. Tells it as it is, really found his, his, his sort of form. And he, he was saying, I've never been quick at anything, I don't know what's happened, but, you know, really <laughs> on his kid. And his sponsor, AMD, they're from Dumfries, they're a trucking company, and he only got involved with them because he got stopped by the ministry at uh, Weybridge. It was overloaded, going back to Ireland with his race kit. He had to get a local firm to help him take some stuff back. The bloke liked him that much, he started <laughs> sponsoring him. So really good. Do you know what, you're as bad as Greg Ames with your stats, you know. No, no, I like him. <laughs> you're really amazing. Nice right. fair play. <laughs> He lost some points to Dan Linfoot at, uh, at Cadwell Park and the challenge for him here is to try and claw them back shaky. They're both on the front row of the grid. It's going to be an interesting battle. Yeah, definitely. Dan's been like uh, a bit of a standout protagonist in this uh, in the Superstock 1000 class. He's done a great job, hasn't he? He's put together a really strong season. But uh, Richard's been chasing him all the way. And, you know, Alistair Seeley, the guy you can see in the background there, number 34, he's done a good job on the BMW, a couple of tracks. But, um, yeah, Richard, Richard's a good lad, really good lad. Yeah, and, that, and that's your three. Dan Linfoot... Um uh, Richard Kerr and Alice Cecily. Really, Joe Tobot had a nightmare. Uh, the young Warrington kid, local boy, but he uh, was swiped off by Billy McConnell. I mean, Billy didn't make a habit of that, but it did happen, and that's cost him any chance of the championship, Joe. But good, good riders, Joe. Two point, two love people actually to point out. Lewis Rollo, second place on the grid this race. Yep. And Fraser Rogers returning back, and he's Yay! in 10th on the April here as well. So, well, it'd be interesting to see what he can do in his really, first yeah. race back. Back full time next year, yes. Fraser. Yeah. I, both on the Aprilia, of course, there is uh, Lewis Rollo on the on the front row of the grid. He showed signs of what he could do a couple of years ago. He's, he's been struggling a little bit since then, James. Nice to see him back, back up. Yeah, it's different. When you're on a bike, that is different, and that is a different bike. That's 1100cc, so it's clipped back in terms of its electronics. It's difficult to know how that would compare with the benchmark bike in this class, is the Honda uh, Fireblade. So you don't know really whether he's riding really well, or maybe he's got a little bit of a bike advantage. I don't think he has. Uh, and he blows a little bit on cold, but when he's on form and he's having a go, he will have a go, will uh, Lewis. I think Fraser will, uh, you know, soon suss that out. When he, you know, he's a bit of a He'll an expected well. guy in this class, yeah. And uh, if he can uh, get a good couple of races under his belt, I'm sure that's going to show the level that bike's at now. Like James said, you know, it's uh, it's difficult to quantify. It has been a bit of a Honda Cup, a couple of BMW wins as well. But um, yeah, be good to see those two getting up there on the Aprilia. Yeah, and Fraser's got a lot of experience on that bike as well. He's, you know, he's able to jump back on it and make it work. In the past year, not done any racing for 24 months. You were telling us, but he did a track day. He uh, really enjoyed it, and, and he he thinks he's definitely got the pace still and he wants to get back in this paddock full time next year. Um, Billy McConnell as you said he didn't cover himself in glory at last time out at Cadwell with a, with a strong move 
listen, we all love Billy. He's brilliant. He's brilliant for the paddock. He's well liked within the paddock. But that was a harsh move between Coppice and Charlie's one at Cadwell. Uh, he admitted it afterwards. And if somebody's admitted it, everybody makes mistakes, all of us on the grid. Uh, and you, you've got to take it on the chin. If somebody who's knocked you down uh, admits it and says he's sorry, that's uh, about all you can hope. Tell you what, about the nicest guy in the paddock as well. Exactly. Billy McConnell. We're looking at him on screen here, like an absolute gentleman. There's not there's not many people to have a bad word for him. So, Nobody. yeah, for him to, uh, to admit it, 